women showed up for me during the making of this film, it was like we were a village raising a baby together. You know, there's something quite maternal about making a movie. And that's why it's so weird and so disappointing that men outnumber us so heavily in this business in the power position. Hi, Leah. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm doing fine in you. Doing good. I think you're my last, my last interview of the day. Okay, that's good. Thank you so much for your time. A pleasure to meet you and to talk to you and to talk about Scramble that I laugh, I cry, Dang. I relate some of some of the parts, but it's, it's, it's amazing. And uh, congratulations on your director debut and everything that will be accomplished with this movie <laughs> so much thank you yes yes and you i'm part of the critics choice as well i'm part of the you must commit I and you received that. the sophie seal how excited was that for you look i i was speechless i didn't even i it's an honor a huge honor because i just want to make movies about women and what it is to be a woman and that's all I want to do in life for women. So it's amazing. That's amazing. So the, I know the inspiration is very personal for you. And it's your own experience, your own like experience from uh, the woman around you. How uh, how much is, is you on, on the movie and how much is your friends or people that you talk about? It? <laughs> it's even hard for me to know sometimes what is me and what is my so i was just i just saw it for the first time with my family i went home to san francisco and my parents saw it for the first time my brother saw it it was really crazy and they know what's real and you know what are my friends but a lot of it is you know it's my experience of my freezing my eggs it's my experience of feeling like i ran out of time to achieve my dreams in some ways but you know, my my best friend was actually pregnant at her wedding, and someone very close to me did have a miscarriage. And it, you know, dating all of these got different types of guys is all real. Um, I didn't end up at the end of my egg freezing journey with a boyfriend. That was true. You know, all of all of it is real to me in some way, you know, whether it's literally what happened in my life or a heightened version or just, you know, the women around me telling their stories as well. I love that you half Latina, half yes. <laughs> Scottish, mm -hmm. Irish. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And I love that you brought Laura to, to play your mom. How was like, what was about her that made you do that? Well, my mom is an immigrant from Nicaragua. So the immigrant experience is very dear to my mom, very important to my mom, very important to me. And I said, I want a Latina actress that is an immigrant herself. And that's hard to find for some reason. And I was like, why is it so hard? Maybe because a lot of the, the famous Latina actresses are in Latin America, and not necessarily here in LA or, you know, Sofia Vergara, like J-Lo, like we've got some of them here, but I feel like it was difficult. And I also wanted a woman that had the warmth of my mom because my mom feels like home. My mom is home. So, a tall order for an actress. Um, but Laura is from Mexico. You know, she's an immigrant herself. She's she's younger than my mom, but she just has this beautiful warmth. She doesn't have any children in real life, but she feels so maternal to me. And I would just hug her <laughs> while we were shooting. And I would just kind of hug her. She felt like my real mom at times. And I just loved her and I just thought she was so beautiful. And I, I just, something about her felt like family. So I thought I'm going to go with the actress that feels like family to me. Yeah. Yeah. I can 
it's some scenes I want to hug her. And I... when she tells the, the dad, uh, Clancy, to no, stop it, para it, to everything I was, say, yeah. <laughs> was amazing. And as a director, what was your, your biggest challenge? Because you're a first time director and you're an actress, but you have that experience there. But what about this director part? What was like the challenge for you? The biggest challenge was not being able to watch my own performance was I would be watching my actors. I'm watching them act. I'm watching, you know, I'm directing, but I can't watch myself and I can't review footage or I'm going to not make my day. You know, I'll go over time. So it required a lot of trust in myself. And that's hard at first, you know. In the beginning, you don't feel like you have any business being the director anyway. Um, and I felt like I was kind of out there to sink or swim. And the beauty was that at night, I would watch my footage every night for hours until I fell asleep. And then I would just go, okay, I'm getting it. It's happening, it's happening. It's all happening, but it was that was the hardest transition was that you in the I'd done two short films as a director and they were much smaller productions and I was able to review footage and I, you know, it I was able to watch myself a little bit more than I was on this one. There was too much going on and the schedule was too tight. So I'd say that was the toughest thing was believing that I was able to handle all of the roles. That's amazing. And why did you decide to to direct your own script? When that that it was the, you were one of that since the beginning was something that came afterwards. Yeah, as I I just said I'm gonna as I was writing it I said I'm gonna direct this one, and I don't need to write it in a way to impress a director because I'm gonna direct it because it's my story, it's my family. I'm deeply protective of my family. I'm deeply protective of my mom and my dad. And I'm deeply protective of a woman's journey through egg freezing. I lived through it. And I'll be very honest. How many female directors in this town that are available have also frozen their eggs? You know what I mean? It was like such a specific, and are Latina like me. You know, no. I'm biracial. <laughs> it's a biracial role. It's a Latina mama. Like, there's a lot that I felt needed to be, needed to get, we needed to get right. I, and I just said, this one is my life. It's my story. I'm not handing it over. I'm done handing it, it over. And I'm so glad because once I was in it, you get even more protective. You're so protective of everything. You, you fall in love with not just your family, but your movie family. You know, you fall in love with Lauda playing your mom. You fall in love with Clancy playing your dad. And I just, Santino playing my brother. You just, I'm so grateful that I dug my heels in and I said, I'm not going to hand it over. I'm glad you did not because it, it's such a, it's such personal. That's why people relate to it. That's why we cry, we laugh, and then you want more of this story. You know what I mean? I watched the movie like three times. <laughs> so, and and ah. yes, yes, I watched the first time, like a link that Adam sent to us. That link I watched twice, and then I watched again to do this interview with you because I think it's so, like, so relatable. Even though I didn't have my ex freeze, I just had some up. Uh, some miscarriages but everything is so relatable and it's amazing it's amazing and you should write more stories that we can relate to thank you and thank you for sharing that because i feel like miscarriage loss of pregnancy not wanting children postpartum fertility struggles for some reason they're always told so dark so heavy nobody wants to watch that because you just feel you're in pain And I just thought, what if we just talked about all of it? Let's just talk about all of it. Let's laugh through it. Let's cry through it together. Let's feel, let's hold each other. Someone very dear to me had a miscarriage and it was painful, you know, very painful. Yeah. So thank you for telling me that. But I guess more than anything, I think the shame that can come with some of these experiences are is a killer. So I want to remove some of the stigma, remove some of that shame. And I think the only way we do that is by talking about it. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And mine was, I, I can tell you, I'm going to tell you, it's like I, mine was oh, yeah. three miscarriage. Wow. And I have one amazing boy <laughs> that he's going to turn amazing. 30. And it's I'm amazing. so sorry about, you know, I read that somebody was saying that when you have these miscarriages and then you have a child, everybody's like, well, you have your child. So it doesn't matter that you have miscarriages and it's so. Uh, do matter. <laughs> You know, because you're like, no, I did lose many. I lost three, right? And it's so yeah. painful to not have that acknowledge that you went through that three times. And it's beautiful that you have your child, but that's a different thing, it's a different experience. So I yeah. feel you. I haven't been there, but I, I've, I, my friends have, and I've been there to support them. And I know how hard yeah, it is. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for for like being supportive in 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 this and showing the world that it's not that easy to to have a miscarriage to have to I don't know run of time to to have kids and all that and also behind the cameras you have your your crew is very and it, you have like ladies doing everything for you everything. And, and also in front of the camera you have your friends you know yeah. what I mean how was that important for you to 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 be in a project like this, you know what I mean? Like to to be able to create a project like that. Yeah, I mean, women get me, you know, in my life as an artist. I feel very, very seen by women, you know, and I want to work with women. Women work their butts off and they and they are supportive and kind in in all in all the way the way the women the way that the women showed up for me during the making of this film it was like we were a village raising a baby together you know there's something quite maternal about making a movie and that's why it's so weird and so disappointing that men outnumber us so heavily in this business in the power positions you know, because there, I think that women have a lot of skills that are perfect for filmmaking. You know, they are used to multitasking. They are used to pain. <laughs> we have pain every month. Yes. We give birth to children. We are hardcore. We can handle this. So I'm just, anytime I'm in a position to hire women, I'm going to hire women. I love that. I love that. And and also, uh, I want to ask you, like, to if you have an advice to give to the ladies out there that want to pursue a career in this business, what advice would you give to them? I would say, if you build it, they will come. You cannot wait around asking for permission. To thine own self be true. Believe in your own story, whatever it is. The weirder, the more unique, the more niche, the better. You don't want to come to this business and just make what they want you to make. You're not going to make a mark. You're not going to do anything to be proud of if you just keep trying to make what they are telling you to make. So listen most, your North Star needs to be your own voice and your own call to, to, to action, you know? And I just want women everywhere to not believe, to know that they can be themselves and find success here. And that's one thing that I'm quite proud of in my career is that I've done a lot of chasing and trying to get people to like me and 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 bosses to say yes to me and begging for work and begging to be seen as a filmmaker but my most powerful moments that i'm most proud of are the moments that i said i actually don't care what any of you have to say about me i don't need you to make a movie all i need is filmmakers like myself and i can make a movie and then somehow some way you end up getting to make movies with the big hits, but I think you don't do it if you're just trying to please them your whole life. Exactly, I agree with you. Liam, I just want to thank you so much for your time. Muchas gracias. And gracias. A lot of success. Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto, a lot of success. And I'm very curious about your next projects, like Summer Loving. I know what you did last summer, all of this and, and, and new stuff from you. I 
very excited for that. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you so much, Jana. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. If you like to support or continue to support Jana on camera, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share the videos.